What's up, everybody? Welcome back to one of the greatest shows on the web, the Dream Scheme Podcast, episode two, hosted by yours truly, Art Turner, presented by Data Productions. I'm telling y'all today, we have a bomber, baby. Yeah, we have a bomber topic today. Now, if you don't know uh, what the Dream Scheme Podcast is all about, um, go peep out episode one. I give a little uh, intro about myself, um, about the show, but uh, just real quick, the Dream Scheme podcast is like everything business, travel, lifestyle, um, culture. Um, we get into what's going on around the world in general. We just always dreaming and we're scheming. So that's our podcast just in a, in a short little brief uh, segment. Now, um, in episode two, like I said, I think we have a bomber, baby. Yeah, I think we do. Um, It's going to be instant gratification versus millennials opportunity. Now, I think this is a very important uh, conversation to have because it's a real problem uh, today in uh, 2018. Instant gratification is a big problem with the social media world, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that. And it's going against, you know, the opportunity of the new world. Um, you know, what I see in, you know, perspective wise and what the millennials have that other generations don't or didn't have when they were coming up. Um, and the world's our oyster and uh, we just got to, you know, take it. But, you know, um, so let's get into it. The intro today is, you know, I'm just going to give a little preface. Uh, I'm just going to give a little preface on uh, what I'm going to be talking about today on the Instant Gratification Millennial Opportunity Show, Episode 2. Um, so in a little bit, uh, in 2018, you know, there's so much money to be had in various paths. Um, you know, with nearly 8 billion people in this world today, um, you can, you know, monetize almost anything. Um, you know, be it through your own physical labor, skills, knowledge, talent, some material product that you can produce and sell. And I'm not I'm not saying that I have your exact answer on how you can uh, use your gifts to, you know, make a living. But what I'm saying that you can still do it, um, you know, so today's conversation, you know, I'm just going to provide examples of, you know, insight, research and some perspective on to the equation on how our generation of millennials and my generation can get their slice of this pie. Um, you know, but like I said, there's a big roadblock in standing right in front of us. That's that, uh, you know, instant gratification. And, um, you know, that's standing in the way that in the way for millennials to be the best they can be. Um, the social media world and instant gratification is weighing us down you know, even before we attempt any flight. Um, so in today's world, everything's happening faster. Content is more saturated than ever before. So it's easy for people to get discouraged easily because they are expecting automatic results. Um, our minds live in Instagram and Facebook statuses, uh, but our bodies still live in the cold reality of the real world on earth. Um, so, you know, that's a little intro. And so let me just get right into it. The first part I want to talk about is instant gratification, fantasy land. Um, just to define instant gratification a little bit, uh, for those who don't know, it's the desire to experience pleasure or fulfillment without delay or determinant. So, um, you want it now when you want it. Um, no questions asked at a click of a button and no, in our world, we definitely get that via the internet. Um, you know, and the internet is a powerful tool. I'm not saying the internet's a bad thing, but it does have, um, consequences like everything does. And then, so the very first statement I want to throw out there before I get into what I'm about to get into is, you know, do not fall into the trap that most of your peers are doing better than what you're doing right now because you see it on social media. Do not fall into that trap. Do not just get, get discouraged because you see other people floss in on social media because most likely that's not the case. You know, social media is just a little Snapchat 
Uh, I mean, social media is just a little snapshot of somebody's whole life. Everything has to be put in perspective. Um, the successful people you see on TV doing cool things, you know, they were they had to work for so long to become where they are right now. A very, very, very small percentage of anybody in the industry and the who are famous or very successful became successful overnight. Um, there's just a couple examples, a couple of my favorite examples. Dave Chappelle started comedy at like age 14. The Dave Chappelle show on Comedy Central then dropped till he was 30. He was already 16 years in the industry before he really, you know, broke out. I'm like sure he was on like Half Baked and a couple other like, you know, movies. um, But he really didn't get his big break till the Chappelle show. And he was already 30. So he was already in the industry for a long time. Another example, uh, you know, for cats, um, they're a little bit younger, like me, I'm like 23, and other cats um, who think, you know, they're behind the eight ball right now. And there's a lot of successful people that, you know, didn't really have their first project until a little bit later in life. You know, mogul Jay-Z, he didn't drop his classic very first album, Reasonable Doubt, till he was 26. He didn't drop Reasonable Doubt till he was 26. You know, there's a lot of cats in the industry that are very young. Um, you know, like Uzi is probably like 22, 23 right now. You know, we have like 18-year-olds. You know, everybody's path is a little bit different. It depends on how much you want to grind. But, you know, Jay-Z didn't drop Reasonable Doubt till he was 26. And, you know, that album didn't go platinum until after his second album dropped. So cats weren't feeling the first album like they should have been feeling it because that's a time-tested classic it's going down in history jay got that you know and it took him 13 platinum albums many different business deals failures successes um to be in a position where jay-z is right now and he still has the hottest chick in the game wearing his chain and he still cheated on her and he still has her that's clout boy that's clout and it takes a long time to have clout not saying you want to do like cheat on your wife but i'm saying it's jay-z you know how he he doesn't have the best looks but he's still you know a mogul um so that's clout and you got to respect that and so just a little bit of a plug alert you know i want to give a good shout out to the breakfast club um you know i'm very fascinated by their show every morning they bring on people you know, in so many different industries having success. And, you know, they talk about, you know, how they came to be who they are right then. Um, and, you know, what are some failures they've had, you know, successes, um, you know, people in the comedy industry, they've, they've had Gary V, a couple CEOs, um, you know, a lot of people. So I would go check out the Breakfast Club if you have it in the morning show. Really dope, really dope. Now, I want to talk to my, you know, my young cats, my young millennials like me right now that want to be CEOs one day. Um, I just want to, you know, throw this out there because I know sometimes y'all get discouraged. But, you know, I don't know why, because, I mean, we're only so young. You know, how can you be the best CEO possible at at a top company, you know, if you haven't trudged the levels of the company Like, you haven't been through it all. You haven't seen it. Like, how is anybody going to um, respect you or who's going to follow you? You know, if you're 26 years old, you're a CEO of a major company. No, it takes years. It takes years upon years. It takes grind. It takes hustle. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, an empire, any empire wasn't built in a day. Like, even becoming successful overnight, it takes a while. Um, so, you know, if you're like 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and you're not CEO yet, bruh, it's going to take a while. But if you're putting, you know, the effort and energy towards that goal still consistently, you'll get there faster than others because not a lot of people are grinding, but you got to grind. Um, and it's not that bad thing, you know, to, you know, go through the hardships because you learn a lot. Um, like I said, it's very rare for to see people 
in ultra leadership positions where they haven't paid their dues. Now, like I said, you know, I don't get too much into politics, but, you know, I, I mean, a big one that comes up is Donald Trump. Um, you know, it's very rare to have him um, get into an ultra leadership position as the president of the United States without having any real, you know, political experience. It doesn't happen that often. It doesn't really happen in any other industry. Um, but just a little bit of example. Um, you know, even in my own goals of running my own production company, like obviously I'm doing it right now. It's on a small scale, but the, the level I want to be at, um, I understand that it's going to take a while. You know, if I haven't even produced a 30 minute documentary yet, how am I going to run a whole production company? That doesn't really make sense. I'm like, obviously, I've been taking steps to that goal to have, you know, an empire eventually. Um, but you got to keep taking the small steps up and towards that goal. You're not just going to drop something and you're like, oh, where's where, you know, where's my penthouse? You know, where's my 50 employees? It doesn't happen like that. It takes years upon years. And, and you got to realize um, the greatest equalizer is a 24 hour day. Everybody only gets 24 hours. So what are you going to do in those 24 hours? If you really want to get after whatever you want to get after, if you want to have the, you know, the nice car, if you want to have a certain type of clout, you know, if you want to travel all over, what are you going to do within those 24 hours to get you to that goal? Um, and then, you know, I think millennials have to think about that because, you know, on the click of a button, we can get almost anything we want. I mean, it's, it's fed to us via the internet. We don't have to, you know, go far and wide to get answers about anything. Um, but still with the internet, we still live in the cold, hard world and, you know, humans only grow a day at a time. You know, we only live 24 hours a, a day at a time. So, you know, that's the limit on how much we can grow. Um, and so we got to take that into consideration and also going back to, you know, the Instagram, uh, you know, shout outs and the Facebook statuses, you know, take those with a grain of salt, definitely, you know, support everybody's mission, you know, provide pro positive energy, but realize that status updates only a small step towards their own goal. Um, you know, they may think they have their dream job at 23, but in all reality, they probably don't. 99.9% per, .9 of us don't have that. Um, and that's okay. All right. So, you know, that's what I was talking about for instant gratification, just little nuggets, um, to, you know, to, to think about. Um, don't let instant gratification get in your way. If you don't have what you have, if you don't have what you want right now, doesn't mean you can't get it. You're just going to have to work. And, you know, that's what separates other people from, you know, being great to, you know, just being mediocre. How, how, how much are you willing to put in? And so now I'm going to get into the millennials opportunity. Now there's a lot of opportunity out here, but, and it's real, it's real. Um, like I said before, there's nearly 8 billion people in the world today. In December, 2017, the consensus came out. There's about 7.6 billion people living right now um, so not not 8 billion exactly but it's getting there very quickly um, and like I said before the power internet comes into play with that many people in the world I'm positive nearly anyone that's driven enough can at least transact a million dollars within 10 years at least and that's outside of a regular job you can transact at least a million dollars by yourself within 10 years and that's still having a regular job, um, you know, at the very least. And a very small percentage of us will become true millionaires, you know, where we can say we have a net worth over a million dollars. Um, but that, that, that does not mean, you know, you cannot claim yourself a piece of that monetary pie that, you know, the earth has to offer um, and something you love doing. Again, you know, it's great to have money and have a lot of things, but, you know, it's better to live the life, you know, you want to live with um, freedom and, you know, not necessarily always having to speak to somebody to get time off. You could just, you know, go. I know that's how I want to live. Um, so that's what I base, you know, my perception on. Before I get into my next segment, um, I just want to throw out a disclaimer. I respect anyone 
working hard and grinding to better themselves, but I'm an entrepreneur at heart, so I'm going to go down the path that may seem like I'm disrespecting a nine to five job, but I'm really not. Um, if you're in a job right now that you're doing something you love, great. I'm supporting you. If you're leading the life you want to live, getting that consistent paycheck, great. I'm rocking with you, but that doesn't mean I have my uh, the same opinions, and that doesn't mean I want to live my life like that. But I'm not. Look, if you're doing what you want to do, keep doing it. Um, but I'm still striving for mine. And so now I'm gonna talk about in my perspective and what I've read and what I see. Again, you know, everything is, you know, through your lens. So I'm just talking about what I see, and maybe you can re- relate or not. I'm going to talk about the trajectory of jobs going forward in the future. Um, and in my opinion, there's a l- backlog of job opportunity with the amount of qualified, degreed individuals out there in the world. People with prestigious educations having trouble finding work in their field. Um, you know, technology is not helping uh, the case either because they're replacing a lot of human jobs. You know, computers are, you know, very fast. Um, and essentially, they could do more at a cheaper rate than, you know, with humans. So that's coming into play. And, you know, the books, one of the books I read in The End of Jobs, author Taylor Pearson, uh, Pearson gives an interesting take on how many jobs within a predefined system are silently killing our ability to move forward in other money creating ways if a job was, if that job was taken from us. Um, saying, you know, we work with these companies sometimes that have us do certain things, certain roles, and we're trained that way. But if that company ever to let us go, let, let you go, how does that experience, you know, lend you to create a career doing something else? You know, so that was a, you know, interesting take. Um, and he also talks about outsourcing is a major wave in America, saving money by, you know, buying labor overseas. Um, so when looking at that, getting a consistent paycheck may not be as safe anymore because almost anyone is replaceable at a company because it's all about the bottom line. If we're being honest, and like I said, it's called the end of jobs. Author is Taylor Pearson. Um, you know, it's a good book. I liked it. Um, again, if you're entrepreneurial, um, it's a good book. And even if you're not, it's a good, um, read to see where, you know, the trajectory of jobs may go. Um, a lot of knowledge based jobs are having a backlog right now, um, with the degrees and all that. So you got to figure out a different way to make money. If you want to live the life you want to live. Um, there's various examples of niche markets out there where people have found success and, you know, have found a career forging their own path. Um, not everybody is going to be an Instagram model. You know, obviously there's Instagram models out there making dough. Shouts out to them. Hustling. Keep hustling. Um, but that can't be the path for everybody. It's already saturated enough. But it doesn't mean you can't make money doing something that outside the normal business walls that you're, you know, you're good at, you have a talent for. Um, So now um, I'm going to reference the book End of Jobs one more time because it has a couple good examples. But then I'm going to get into this other book I read. Um, So again, with the End of Jobs, there was a good example of where this dude uh, made this CD uh, selling website called CD Baby back in the day. And then um, so what we do then you know, people who had music, who had trouble getting out there, they would throw it on CB, cdbaby.com and then they would have a brokerage price and the dude who made it would get a percentage. But now one of the people who, uh, you know, put her product on CD Baby was a Norwegian woman who uh, made music tailored to sailors in that area. And she was booming. Um, I forget the numbers uh, she was trapping out, but the sailors were eating up her music. Um, and that's just like a little example of where, you know, if you're good at making sailor music, you know, people will still buy product for you. You could get a consistent uh, paycheck out of that. Um, and then the book uh, $100 Startup by Chris Gillibo. I think that's how he spelled, uh, said his last name. Anyway, it's $100 Startup. 
Um, he documents countless examples on how others, you know, create a living, you know, individuals, you know, selling spreadsheets uh, for Microsoft Excel, consulting firms, importers of wine and Spanish food, you know, people selling maps um, right here. Hundred dollar startup, another good book, Chris Gillibo, um, another entrepreneurial book. Again, I like one day I do want to, you know, do my own thing. Obviously, you have to, you know, go through uh, the system, but you know that's my end goal. And so, you know, there's just a couple. There's a, actually a lot of examples within this book where um, he, you know, has a lot of uh, uh, interviews with different uh, entrepreneurs and different companies they have. Like I said, this is a company called Tapas for Lunch. Um, Tapas Lunch Company is a UK based importer of Spanish food. Um, the Mogul Mom is one of the mom. It's like a mom that consults other moms to be entrepreneurs. Um, so things like that. I would go definitely check out this book. It's a quick read, um, and he's a hustler. So if you like hustling, uh, go get this. All right, y'all. So back to it. Remember, eight billion people live in this world who are consuming products at an astounding rate you can really find work using your talents but by no means is this task easy this isn't an easy road but it's more rewarding than in the end of the day i mean when you're when you're 60 and you're saying oh what did i do with my life at least you say you know i did what i wanted to do i think that's the goal that's my goal at least um, and this is where us millennials uh, must throw this instant gratification out of the window because nothing worth having is easy to get. You know, we got to grind for it. Um, you know, more freedom is the goal, right? You know, uh, Andrew Carnegie at that time had the most freedom almost out of anybody. I mean, now at that time, like it wasn't as free as the regular person today, not making as much money. But at that time, his grind, his putting in the hours, he was able to travel, go on trains, um, go to, you know, uh, London. You know, the average person back in the industrial time could not do that. But he had the ability to do that. Um, he had more freedom than the average person, but he had to grind to get there. Um, you know, and maybe you want to, you know, have a part time job and hustle on the side, just a little bit more freedom, or even, you know, you want to have that mailbox money coming in where you just have paychecks coming in, hitting the bank account, but you still living your life. That's going to take sacrifice up front, and it's going to be a while, but you can do it. Um, and I just want to throw some, I uh, have another book I want to talk about before uh, we end the show today. That there's a couple nuggets I like in this book. Um, I also want to shout out Vernon Stobel, one of the best teachers I've ever had, probably the best teacher I've ever had, my global marketing teacher, the global marketing teacher, uh, really dude, really cool dude. Um, he's, he's definitely got clout in this world. And one of the books we read in my senior year of college, shout out University of Redlands, was a great by choice by Jim... Collins um, and Jim Collins gives great insight on um, what we call 10x companies. So like companies like Southwest, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, companies that have stood the test of time that have been here for a good while and has um, been resilient to failure. And so he takes these companies and um, he compares them to very similar companies but didn't have the same success success as these 10x companies. Um, and there's a couple of examples where he breaks it down individually as well. And then I'm going to break it down individually for us millennials. Anybody really um, trying to, you know, have the life they want. So here are some key points I think that are valuable for our generation um, that talked about in the book. One of them was fire bullets, then cannonballs. So I'm going to uh, just read a little uh, couple segments from the book to break down what that means and uh, go from there individually. So fire bullets, then cannonballs. A bullet is a low cost, low risk, and low distraction test or experiment. 10Xers, those companies, use bullets to empirically validate what will actually work. 
Based on that empirical validation, they then concentrate their resources to fire a cannonball, enabling large returns from concentrated bets. Our 10x cases fired a significant number of bullets that never hit anything. They didn't know ahead of time which bullets would hit or be successful. Now, in the case for individuals, um, like they said, bullets are a low-cost, low-risk, low-distraction test or experiment. Now, bullets for us could be, you know, hey, you know, maybe I like to write. Maybe I like to sing. Maybe I like to do video. But you have to test that out to figure out what you're good at. And then when you see a couple of these bullets, I um, start like, okay, I like to write, you know, I like books. And then you figure like, okay, I want to throw a cannonball at this. I want to be an author. So you put your time and your energy into trying to be that and validate that because that's what you're good at. And that's how, you know, you'll get the most um, pleasure out of your life. Now, it doesn't make sense if, you know, you like to you know you have a steady hand you like to help people and um you love science it doesn't make sense for you to try to put all your energy into being you know you know a truck driver i mean if you want to be a truck driver you know like it sounds like you want to be you know a doctor so uh that's very important that you know you figure out what you're good at and then you go from there um so again Great by choice, Jim Collins. And there's another part I want to talk about in this book. He talks about um, 20 mile march, being consistent. This is very important. 20 mile march builds confidence. By adhering to a 20 mile march, no matter what challenges and or unexpected shocks you encounter, you prove to yourself and your enterprise that performance is not determined by your condition, but largely by your own actions. Failing to 20 mile march leaves an organization more exposed to turbulent events, turbulent events. So, you know, the 20 mile march helps you exert self-control in an out of control world. Um, so while well, breaking that down, 20 mile march for individuals, um, first, I guess to break down for companies. So what they are talking about company wise is that, you know, you consistently have consistent, uh, goals, like attainable goals. Um, and in the book, he brings up how say two people start at one point in San Diego and go to Maine, the other point of the country. Uh, one individual decides to do the 20 miles each day to get to the goal. And the other individual decides that, you know, on a good day, I'm going to go 100 miles. And on a bad day, I'm not going to go any miles. Um, over time, through that conquest, you realize the guy going 20 miles a day ends up getting there faster than the person who wanted to, you know, go out of control um, with 100 miles a day, then no miles on a bad day. Um, if you are you if you're consistent about your craft in any industry, you will get there faster. Um, you don't want to throw everything all at once if you don't have to, um, and then you don't want to do anything at all. You want to keep just a steady motion forward. That's very important. And, you know, the best investment you could ever make is investing in yourself and in your future and what you makes you happy. Um, but to do that for a lot of us in this world, it comes at a price and it comes at a sacrifice. You know, it's going to take a lot of hard work to reach those levels. It's not going to be easy and you're going to have to be willing to make mistakes. Um, I'm a sports guy and, you know, here's an example of, you know, following your dreams when, you know, you feel like you're not even close to it. Um, the ex defensive coordinator for the new England Patriots, uh, Matt Patricia, is now the head coach of the Detroit Lions. Um, you know, he was offered a six-figure job at one point to work on nuclear submarines, but instead he took a defensive line assistant coaching job to make only $6,000 a year at Amherst College, and now he's a head coach. He's already a Super Bowl-winning uh, coach. Um, 
And, you know, another example, uh, Fat Joe, uh, shout out Breakfast Club and Drink Champs for their podcast. They had brought on Fat Joe recently, and Fat Joe has his own podcast now, Coca Vision, that just came out. But Fat Joe is a mogul. People need to give him respect. Um, he's been in the, the music game for 20 years, still doing it. But, you know, he tells a story on Breakfast Club how um, he had a rep against almost 100 people at amateur night at the Apollo in New York week after week to win the amateur championship. And that's how he first got his um, start in the music business. That's when he sur- first, you know, got out his mix mixtape to one of the DJs. Um, it took, you know, weeks, weekends after weekends, you know, competitions after competitions um, to do that. Somebody's, everybody's got to start somewhere. Um, so that's the dream scheme podcast today. Just a little, um, you know, um, perspective on, you know, instant gratification and the millennials opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity out there for millennials, man. There's a lot of money to be had in niche markets all across the world with your talents. You just can't let this social media, uh, wave get in your way. Um, you know, people are going to flex, but don't let that discourage you. You got to keep doing your 20 mile march, f- keep firing, follow, firing your bullets, and then hit your cannonball and go from there. Um, so that that's all I got for you today. Dream Scheme Podcast presented to you by Data Productions. My name's Art Turner. Um, and, you know, keep expecting more. We're coming. So uh, peace.